Dear friends, welcome to this edition of uh, VBS Anatoma, a series of e-learning lectures in human anatomy. We are covering the head and neck regions. These are video lectures posted on YouTube. The topic we are covering is the nasal cavity. This is the second of the series. Here we are going to discuss in detail the lateral wall of the nose. I am Dr. Bala Subramaniam. I work here as professor in the Department of Anatomy, St. John's Medical College, Bangalore, India. Now the lateral wall, as I have called it, the gateway to the labyrinthine maze. Here you will appreciate how the nasal cavity is closely uh, associated with uh, uh, air sinuses and how these air sinuses uh, open into the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. Now recalling a previous slide from the, from the uh, older videos, here is a sagittal section, mid sagittal section of the dry bone skull marked in blue and white uh, dashed uh, oval is the region we are going to study that's the lateral wall same this is in a dissected museum mounted specimen uh, the same area has been shown now we have enlarged or zoomed into the uh, lateral wall of this museum specimen and now we can roughly divide this lateral wall into uh, the uppermost olfactory area there is a line of demarcation rough line of demarcation the area entirely above it is the olfactory area the mucosa is olfactory mucosa you can actually see the olfactory fibers very clearly running down vertically in this region the area below it is divided into two parts a larger posterior respiratory area and a smaller uh, vestibule region the vestibule region is immediately above the anterior nares now there is another area closely related to the uh, nose uh, it's right behind the posterior covena. Uh, that is the nasopharynx. It's nothing but immediately the cavity, immediately behind the nasal cavity. Next, in the same discussion context, we will also try to identify whatever is immediately visible in the uh, near vicinity. Like for example, the sphenoid layer sinus can be seen uh, immediately above and behind the nasal cavity. Now, the hard palate and the tongue right below it are also shown for completion because the hard palate separates it from, uh, separates the nasal cavity from the oral cavity. Next, a little behind the hard palate, you can see the soft palate, that muscle mass that is seen as a uh, dark brown structure is the uvula, uvular muscles. Now you see, right above, in the uppermost part of the olfactory area, is a perforated piece of bone and a lot of small, small openings. Through these perforations, the olfactory fibers, which, which I just introduced you in the previous slide, that are running vertically, they pierce through this uh, plate, cribriform plate, that's why these foramina are there, and then they join the olfactory bulb. From the olfactory bulb, these fibers uh, go through the olfactory tract into the central nervous system. Next, this part is the projecting part of the nose that it projects in front of the uh, rest of the of face, contour of the face, uh, that's the area, external nose. Uh, maybe that warrants a completely separate video discussion. 
come to complete the discussion the area of the vestibule and uh, the part where it opens out uh, is the anterior nares or the anterior opening of the nasal cavity next let's examine uh, the walls of the nasal cavity in in a little more technical uh, details if you have uh, recently visited a, a supermarket or uh, a, a shop grocery shop you would have seen lot of uh, the most important other than the main items that is kept are the shelves same same design is is noticed in the uh, nasal cavity only thing there are no groceries there um, let's have a, a panoramic tour of this area now you see we will identify three important shelves the lowermost shelf is called the inferior concha next immediately above a little smaller than this in size is the middle concha finally above all this the smallest of the three is the superior concha they project into the cavity of the nose as an extension from the lateral wall primarily it increases the surface area one second it is highly vascular so that can uh, add the necessary uh, blood supply to it so that the incoming air can be warmed um, that's the that's the purpose and also the incoming air gets uh, sampled because the olfactory uh, area is uh, in close vicinity in the upper part of the nose so there are multiple functions these shelf like projections are designed to um, help these functions next let's examine each of these shelf like projections the inferior concha is actually an individual piece of bone it it is not a part of either the maxilla or the ethmoid as we normally tend to think it is an individual small bone of the nose it it projects it's like a plug in onto the lateral wall of the nasal cavity in this region in a later stage of the discussion we will cut through the root of the uh, inferior concha and you will see where it is attached you will see that immediately behind the attachment is the maxillary uh, ear sinus uh, in fact a small part of the uh, inferior nasal concha plugs the medial wall of the uh, maxillary uh, ear sinus next the below the inferior concha the cavity because it projects like a shelf the nasal cavity is divided into uh, smaller uh, cavities the inferior concha is the cavity immediately below the in, sorry inferior meatus is the cavity immediately below the inferior concha likewise the middle meatus is the cavity below the uh, middle concha and finally the superior meatus is below the superior concha next this is another specimen uh, this is uh, only thing the previous one was neatly cleaned and you know mounted there it was a museum specimen but here this is a fresh uh, dissection that's all the difference here also you can see the inferior concha and the inferior meatus and below the inferior meatus you can also see the hard palate and the soft palate middle concha and the middle meatus uh, is now shown and finally the superior concha and the superior meatus this is the uh, set of six structures which are very crucial uh, signature items in the uh, lateral wall next same thing whatever as I, as i told you in almost all my videos no matter how much you you see and learn in the dissection material nowadays it is important that the corresponding structures are also appreciated on imaging modalities here we have a mid sagittal section of the uh, head and neck region you can see the same inferior concha and the inferior meatus uh, seen uh, shown there below the inferior meatus you can see here as i am showing you with the tip of my pointer is the hard palate and further below the lowermost part the large area is the tongue middle meatus and the middle concha above it 
superior meatus and the superior concha. These are the very same structures seen in an imaging modality CT scan head and neck. Now, the, I am trying to introduce these concepts in different views of the dissected specimen. Initially, we started with the mid sagittal section or rather slightly parasagittal where the septum has been uh, removed off so that the lateral wall is well seen. That was one. The second, we saw the same thing in an imaging that is CT scan head and neck. Now, let's take a uh, cross section in the coronal plane, coronal section of head and neck and try to identify these very same structures. Now, that is the inferior, sorry, inferior concha shown by the uh, pointer, superior concha and then the middle concha. Watch, watch this carefully. I will give some time uh, for you to identify. See, below the inferior concha, you can see the floor of the nasal cavity, which is also the roof of the oral cavity. And further below it, you can see the dorsum of the tongue and the cross section of the tongue. So this is a slide, very, very key slide showing the three conchae. Next, immediately below the inferior concha is the inferior meatus, or you can say it the uh, opposite way. Above the meatus is the corresponding concha. Keeping that in mind, now that's the superior meatus and that is the middle meatus. So there's a third way of looking at it. The middle meatus is in between the middle concha and the inferior concha. Superior meatus is between the superior concha and the middle concha. That's another way of telling. In due course, we will also add one more. Above the superior concha, there is a small space called the sphenoethmoid recess into which the sphenoid layer sinus will open. That we will add on in due course. Now you see, again, it is worth this much of orientation and reinforcement, reorientation, repetition in different contexts. Here is a CT scan coronal section of the head region. You can see the inferior concha and the corresponding meatus superior concha and the corresponding meatus below it, middle concha and the corresponding meatus below it. You see, inferior meatus, superior meatus, middle meatus. Now, if you <coughs> random labeling to complete the discussion and to make sure uh, the orientation is perfect. Now, for example, see that's the frontal sinus right above sphenoidal sinus above and behind the nasal cavity. Remember sphenoidal sinus we have already identified in other specimens. Now this is important in the nasopharynx, although it's not a part of today's discussion, nevertheless it is a very prominent structure in the nasopharynx, the lateral wall, you can see the anterior opening of the eustachian tube and as pointed out in the next slide, the hood-like uh, mucus fold around it is the salpingopharyngeal fold. It contains the muscle, uh, the salpingopharyngeus muscle. Now that's the vestibule the, to, to complete the discussion. Now that's the salpingopharyngeal fold, which I told you just a little while back. Now, again, for the sake of completion, again, re-identifying the hard palate and the soft palate in this photograph. Next, this is where we move into the uh, stage called further dissection uh, of the nasal cavity. The title will come in the next slide or so, but then I am already introducing you to this concept. Here what we have done is the inferior concha has actually been removed. We have, we have knocked off the inferior and the line of uh, attachment to the lateral nasal wall is, is still left, uh, left behind. Now that is the cut edge of the inferior nasal concha. Next, you see, right below the cut edge of the inferior nasal concha, you can see I have put a curved arrow. In fact, the arrowhead is going into the uh, opening there. That is the inferior opening of the nasolacrimal duct. See how, how intact it is uh, in terms of its location. In fact, that is the only opening in the inferior meatus. Next, 
when I make that uh, curved arrow flash, you can see I actually put a pin, a, a small uh, pin. I have bent it uh, so that it is inside that uh, opening. Next, let's go into the middle meatus. That's why I put a title here. Although I started the discussion in the previous slide, the idea is middle meatus warrants a complete a more thorough discussion primarily because the number of structures uh, in its uh, walls and uh, the immediate vicinity are quite a few and hence a more detailed discussion. Now you see the middle meatus and uh, the details of that is now shown here. The meatus itself only a part of that cavity is visible uh, but then you can also see one more label called the bulla ethmoidalis. On the lateral wall of the middle meatus, that means right below the middle concha, uh, this elevation, it's like a, a, a small bulge. Uh, that bulge is because of the ethmoidal sinus located deep to it. Ethmoidal sinus. Remember, in the previous discussions, we have already introduced that the ethmoidal sinuses are cavities present in the ethmoid bone. Um, now, this is the prominence that is seen. Next. A little behind that, you can see the maxillary hiatus or the opening of the uh, maxillary air sinus. Remember, although the air sinus is located uh, quite below, uh, the, the opening in particular appears as in this case a little higher up. The disadvantage is if the head is kept in the, uh, let's say in the, if the person is in a seated position or a standing position and there is an infection uh, in the maxillary cavity, it's likely to accumulate because the uh, hole or the maxillary opening into the lateral wall is at a higher level. This is very important from the clinical aspects because in the event of an infection and accumulation of a, a fluid in the uh, maxillary air sinus, uh, okay, in addition to other treatments like antibiotic, etc., the ENT surgeon will always suggest steam inhalation and also. Uh, corresponding to the steam inhalation immediately after a, a, a slab of a, a steam inhalation, the surgeon will advise you to uh, lie down or keep the head on one side. Let's say if the head is resting on the, say the left side, uh, then the right side uh, starts draining by gravity. 10, 15 minutes later, again re-steam and then uh, lie on your right side. Then the left maxillary sinus becomes uh, uh, higher up and uh, starts uh, draining uh, by gravity. This is this is very important. Also remember there is a ciliary current that will drive some of it, but then uh, for the quantum of the uh, fluid in the sinus and the uh, position of the head, it may not be an entirely comfortable drainage or it may not be a, an entirely complete drainage. Hence, these additional measures may be required for faster recovery. Next, immediately behind and a little below the maxillary sinus, I have put another orange color arrow. Now let's uh, make that arrow flash. The moment I remove the arrow, you can see a pin uh, attached there. Now that is the, um, that's, a, that's a small gap, uh, a foramen we would say, between the sphenoid bone and the palatine bone. So that's the sphenopalatine foramen. On the other side of the sphenopalatine foramen, that means outer to the lateral wall or lateral to the lateral wall is the pterygo, uh, the, the, the ganglion of the corresponding name. This ganglion is an important ganglion of the parasympathetic system. Its fibers get into the nasal cavity through this space or this foramen. Now that's the foramen, sphenopalatine foramen. I repeat, that's the sphenopalatine 
palatine foramen. Remember the maxillary hiatus is right in front of it, a little in front of it. Next, few other things because this I told you middle middle meatus needs more extensive details. Now the infundibulum is a, a small funnel-like area in the anterior part, just anterior to the ethmoidal bulla. In fact, the bulla that is raised or the elevation itself is responsible for creating this groove, funnel-shaped groove called the infundibulum. Raised upwards, this infundibulum leads you to the uh, front layer sinus. In fact, the infundibulum is the spot where the front layer sinus drains into the nasal cavity. Next, let's uh, that's that's the flashing uh, curved orange arrow indicating the location of the um, infundibulum. You can see the immediate posterior relation, the anterior, uh, sorry, the ethmoidal bulla. Next, the bulla itself, uh, as I'm I'm showing you immediately behind that orange area, the bulla itself. Uh, has the openings of the anterior and the middle ethmoidal air sinuses. Uh, I repeat, the anterior and the middle ethmoidal air sinuses as reflected by that flashing arrow. Now, it's difficult on the first shot to identify all these details like bulla ethmoidalis, etc. in a, a fully uh, fresh cadaver. We always try to back up uh, with a with a short uh, introduction in the dry skull. More details are about this is given in uh, the osteology videos. But here, let's recall uh, some of the salient features. Now you see the bulla ethmoidalis is shown as a prominence in the lateral wall of the middle meatus. The infundibulum is shown as a funnel shaped opening. Raised above, it opens into the front layer. Rather, the front layer sinus opens into the middle meatus through the infundibulum and at a lower level because it's well seen i have mentioned it the opening of the lac nasolacrimal duct this is in the uh, inferior meatus that is below the um, uh, inferior concha you can see the uh, cut uh, edge of the inferior concha also seen in this dry uh, mid sagittal section is of the skull is the maxillary hiatus and the sphenopalatine foramen. I repeat, this we saw in the previous cadaver dissection. I am showing the same in the uh, dry skull. Huge sphenoidal sinus is also shown in this particular uh, photograph. Next, the superior concha and the superior meatus is extremely well seen, easily identifiable because it is the space immediately above the middle concha. Is the space immediately above the middle concha. The posterior ethmoidal sinus opening is located here. Next, above the superior concha, that space that you see, you can even see the opening of the sphenoidal air sinus into that. That's the sphenoidal air sinus opening. That area where it opens above the superior concha is the sphenoethmoidal recess. Now, as we come to the end of the discussion, let's have a brief touch of the blood supply and the nerve supply. I, I have a very good uh, museum specimen of the nerve supply, so I will give you uh, a, a little detailed coverage. Here is a dissection of uh, the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. That's very obvious. You can see as I'm pointing out the um, inferior concha, the middle concha, In the middle concha a part of the mucosa has been removed and the bone is visible. So that way the contrast is excellent. Next, a small bit of the nasal septum, you know, a small stalk of the nasal septum uh, looks like the posterior border area is uh, or maybe a little bit uh, uh, in front of it is also left behind. There is a narrow there. Uh, that's why the, that has been left behind. We'll come to that a little later and more detail in the nasal septum discussion. Nevertheless, that's the nasoparatine nerve in the uh, septum. But then watch carefully. Right above that, the pterygoparatine ganglion is seen. That means we have broken the lateral wall because the size of the sphenopalatine foramen is not sufficient to show the detailed branching pattern of the pterygoparatine. Therefore, we have removed it. 
having removed it, the entire branching of the interoperative ganglion is visible. With reference to this particular discussion, you can see the lesser palatine now going down vertically and the greater palatine now also going down in front of it and it goes here and then it moves forwards on the uh, inferior surface of the hard palate to supply the oral cavity. Now, this is a very important uh, uh, specimen which, which introduces you to the uh, coverage of the uh, nerve, nerve supply to the lateral wall of the nose. Remember, these fibers, these are all containing parasympathetic fibers, postganglionic parasympathetic fibers from the pterygopalatine ganglion. They are secretomotor to the um, local glands of the nasal cavity. Next, I do not have a artery, but just to, to add yeah, to a concluding note, uh, the sphenopalatine artery is the major supplying artery to the lateral wall. Now, it's time we moved on to uh, a few MCQ uh, questions, multiple choice questions. These are image based MCQs. Uh, I suggest students to pause at every MCQ for any length of time that you need, customize uh, thing, pause and learn. Uh, the answers are given at the very end of this uh, video. Now, as I said, I am going fast, but you, you should pause for your own convenience. Identify the pointed structure. The photograph given is a uh, mid sagittal section. Uh, the septum is not there, a little lateral to it. The lateral wall of the nose is very clearly visible. Certain parts of the lateral wall has been uh, highlighted. Let's uh, uh, put the blue arrow in flash mode. You see, identify that pointed structure. There are four choices. One of them is the correct answer. Uh, you can always check at a later uh, at the end of the video. MCQ number two, here is a dry bone, same. Uh, the lateral wall is seen in the sagittal view. Again, let's uh, flash the arrow. There is a uh, opening which the tip of the arrow is pointing out. Identify that particular opening. What structure opens there? For this, you have to understand where is the location of the arrow and what opens into it. Next, MCQ number three. Same thing, let's flash the arrow. Remember, this is a very good specimen where the lateral wall has been partly removed uh, and uh, the pterygopalatine ganglion has been beautifully demonstrated. Now, identify the pointed structure. Now, you see, that's the pointed. The flashing arrow is the pointed structure which you are expected to identify. Next, MCQ number four. Directly, I am pointing to a sinus, air sinus where see where it is located see its size see its immediate relations and then try to identify now that's the flashing arrow and that's the sinus you you try to form a opinion what sinus is this you can always check later finally the last mcq another sinus has been uh, put uh, for identification let's flash the arrow now identify this flashing uh, arrow again it's an air sinus so half the clue is given this is a coronal section of the head come to a conclusion now you see those are the answer keys i suggest you go back and forth between the answer of the question to re uh, confirm your answers now dear friends that was a brief disc discussion a lecture come demo of the salient features of the lateral wall of the nose. This is a very important uh, topic because from my experience, I have noticed this coming as a theory question, either as a short note, say for example, um, blood supply of the lateral wall, nerve supply of the lateral wall, or uh, structures opening in the lateral wall, or it could also come as a um, yeah, exam window specimen where you will be given a uh, 
clean neatly cleaned dissected specimen and that will be discussed um, as a practical topic most interestingly this this area is very very commonly asked in the mcq questions for example the only structure that opens into the inferior meatus of the nose is you see they will give three four distractors but the answer is uh, the lower end of the uh, nasolacrimal duct similarly in an image based mcq they can focus one opening of the any one opening of the middle meatus and ask what it is so therefore this is a very interesting and a very important region not only clinically but also from the point of view of examination because it can come as a long essay it can come as a short essay it can come as a short specific question it can come as an exam specific a uh, practical spe specimen dissection discussion it can even be kept in the viva was a where a um, sagittal section of the uh, head and neck can be kept and the lateral wall could be an area of potential discussion